All right. Um, so my name is Claire. I lead the learner success team at Coursera, which uh, community is a is a big component of that. And community is also my background. Um, and oh, yes. So today we are talking about community manager burnout. Um, it's uh, it's kind of a, a hot topic in the in the community industry. Um, I think in in many cases, community managers are a team of one, um, which makes it difficult to sort of share the workload and make time for yourself. And then also because our communities are there 24 seven, it can be really difficult to kind of turn that off and, and take a take a break from it. So I figured this would be a topic worthy of discussion. Cool, thank you. So maybe, so I co-host this monthly series with Claire. Maybe we can start with our own, like one story to share related to burnout and our strategies in dealing with it. Um, I can start. Um, I used to work in tech and product marketing and I got burned out. So I started doing events, meetup events to try and get to know the tech community in my hometown where I escaped for, to heal myself from the burnout. <laughs> And um, I loved what I was doing, uh, trying to get to know people, sharing what I know, uh, encouraging young kids to get into tech. I didn't think of my, since I just came from burnout, I had a very positive outlook. I didn't mean to start a community. I just said I wanted to do what I wanted to do, which was share what I know and teach people. Eventually I got burned out because I was going go, 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 and I didn't have boundaries. And I just remembered that what works for me is I always set goals of when my next vacation is. And I always try to treat myself to a mini vacation every three months. So if I suffer in my head, I say one more month for vacation, two vacation, two <laughs> months of vacation. That's the way I deal with it. So I do yearly goals. And then I always have a treat for myself every quarter. So I have something to look forward to. That's how I do it. Nice. That's a good strategy. Um, I guess I can go next. Um, so my, my I, I don't think I have ever uh, actually got burned out. I've been kind of fortunate or perhaps I'm just, you know, naturally yeah. good at, at putting in those boundaries. Um, but I do... Um, I do have a have a story. Um, so I I have been at, at Coursera. It, it's mostly been me, and then on and off, I've I've had another another community manager. Um, more recently, I have a bigger team. But um, so about three years ago, we um, we were in the process of actually launching a brand new community. We had got, uh, we'd signed on with Inside It as, a, as an external community platform that we'd not used any external platforms before. And we'd gone through the process of, of launching this community. And I had booked a vacation um, like long before we knew when this thing was actually going to be launching um, and things, things got delayed. And it ended up that we were going to launch our brand new community uh, like right when I was going on vacation and at the time I was the only community manager so I I I went to my manager and I was like I was so I was going on a cruise right so it's not like I would have access to the internet necessarily but I discovered that they they did have internet on the boat but you have you know you have to pay a lot um so I went to my manager and I said there's nobody else who can look after this community when it launches. Can I expense the Wi-Fi on the cruise and, um, you know, check in on this community uh, just like every day? You know, I, I, I definitely took a vacation as well, but I, I carved out some time every day to check in on the community. And I'm glad I did because we had a, a spam attack uh, right after we launched um, cause I guess, you know, when you first launched, you haven't necessarily buttoned up all the holes mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And our community was, was vulnerable. So yeah, we had this huge bam attack. So I, I was fortunate I, that didn't actually burn me out, but I think that's one example of, of where 
you know, community managers often feel compelled to do things like that, that we probably shouldn't really do. <laughs> yeah. I thought was like, if you had to cancel that cruise, that would not have been cheap. So <laughs> I'm glad you worked things out. Who wants to share next? Alicia, you're on mute. Is that how you say your name? Uh, oh, hey, uh, it's uh, Alicia, but it can be Alice as well. Uh, Alicia. Yeah. Um, so um, I had like a community related job um, at Microsoft like a long time ago, like three, four years ago. And I had like an epic burnout there. <laughs> um, yeah, and I love the community. I love the people. I'm still like in touch with many of these people like until today. But I got to this point where I was like, um, I felt like very alone for fighting for community within a big organization. So like I tried to like make the changes for the community. Uh, but it was just like so hard and like it was like a constant struggle and constant pushing back and I could feel like um, the support of the community and like the people and I really believed like what they wanted and what was good for them was also good for organization but it was just like so hard to push, push some of the things through and I just like and after like fighting for a year I was just like I, I couldn't do it anymore and I had like an epic burn down and I just I just stopped and oh. I yeah. yeah and it felt really bad then I went to do some marketing stuff which were like less people oriented more like um, you know social media marketing and yeah now I have a community position again after <laughs> some break and uh, yeah it's been like uh, three months now so it's uh, it's uh, still a beginning and um, and yeah and we'll see how it goes now but i did have like a major major burnout in the community position back in the day are you still in the same company or different oh no 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 uh, no i after the, my burnout was a uh, a major one. I, I like I love. I did like nine months of traveling and everything. <laughs> I had like a classic corporation burnout. <laughs> now I work for like a small company that hires um, twenty people or something. So yeah. I'm just curious now that you, there's been some time. Uh, do you, do you think about what you could have done differently? Any learnings? Hmm. To be fair, I'm like, I'm pretty proud of uh, what I've been doing. And I think I was just like, I really believe I could make a change. Mm. And I really pushing for the things that I still believe are good things. Mm. So I, I feel like, uh, you know, the only thing like maybe persistence or like uh, trying to be more political and not as radical about it might have been like, um, more successful and less burning out approach but overall i feel like i i did everything i could yeah you're braver than me i would have escaped too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> welcome everyone we need edmund kit leanne and pinar we're just sharing like one story about burnout and maybe share one strategy that you guys have Whoever wants to go next. Maybe I can go. Um, actually, I haven't experienced this yet. Uh, my main concern is <laughs> experiencing this because I'm actually, mentioned I'm quite new to this and I don't even know uh, what it means to be a community manager in other communities because I've, uh, started working here in a community called uh, the ladies project it was the ladies project before and it became hey lady and it launched a new uh, platform and i'm learning everything here um, i've been working here for two years but um, you know my team is making everything so easy for me and um, so i'm learning the ropes uh, and my main concern is actually i've developed and improved my english in this community too so i was a member of before starting working there 
So my uh, generally whole social life is also in this community. And I have friends from this community and I love spending time in this community. But also I really, I really wanna be able to separate work from my social life in this community because you know often my friends are coming to me and asking questions about the technical things or reporting some issues and you know these kind of things and I'm a very forgetful person so that's why I just want to go there and open my uh, turn on my computer and then just do it at that point but sometimes I'm outside or I'm doing something else and it's not my working hours um, so I'm not very quite good at this right now and it's not an issue at this point because I'm quite happy with this but I'm sure uh, and I'm afraid that this can cause um, this burnout in the future and I really don't want to um, have this experience because I love my work and I love this community. So uh, I really want to set this boundary so that I can uh, continue with the same enthusiasm. That's a tricky one for sure. That uh, definitely seems risky, but uh, trying to figure out what to do about it, I think is, is also difficult um because when it is kind of your friends it's it's work and it's not work right and it, so if it's like your evening you're like well i'm just talking to my friends um how can you argue against that so uh yeah that's that's difficult i i would i don't know see if you can give them a give give your friends a different way of getting in touch with you so it's not through the community but yeah. Also, what I've been trying, you know, maybe um, especially bringing this up about my poor memory so that I kind of direct them to the like uh, so that they can write there to me uh, things related to work and the issues in the community so that we can talk about some other things on WhatsApp. <laughs> So a, a couple of things I want to add. Uh, I mentioned boundaries. And what I loved about uh, technology also is there's a way for you to inform people of your work hours and your work style. And so I, in some way or another, like I have seen people put in the bottom of their email to say, maybe there's some intelligence that says, you have reached me during off hours. If this is urgent, X. Otherwise, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And then you also start, you reinforce that by telling your friends and whoever you need to talk to, say, I usually work from this hour to this hour. So if it's urgent uh, and you need to reach me after hours, do so, but I probably won't respond until the next day. Setting expectations with people. Yeah, I, and echoing that, I think you mentioned Slack. So Slack's actually really, really good about having all of these settings you can put in place, all of these automated uh, like statuses that let people know if you're working or not or busy or what have you, and also enabling you to like fully turn off your notification during certain hours. So you can't even be tempted because you don't know that there are new messages to tell one client of mine who would talk to me 24 7 saturday sunday i'm like look on sundays i don't work so you can email me as much as you can but i won't reply to you until monday unless you're dying then call me <laughs> reinforcing that boundaries for you boundaries for them also that's that's true tina so i'll be switching on my video because uh, things are not pretty uh, in the office setting. I am actually joining in in the late evening out here from India. Okay. So I have experienced uh, burnouts multiple times in my career. All right, I've been working since last 13 years. Since last six years, I've been part of the community and the startup ecosystem. And I went solo as a community strategist and growth consultant last year in the midst of pandemic. All right. So now when I take up uh, uh, the consulting assignments, uh, first of all, I choose not to work on Mondays. 
because we as community professional thursdays to sundays are like pretty hectic tied up uh, days because most of the generally happens on friday evening to over the weekend mm -hmm. right so so purposefully i try not to do any work on mondays and that has actually helped me out additionally uh, every once in three months i try to take about seven to ten days break which basically means i have set expectations with my clients and everything that uh, i'm not available even though uh, i am accessible on social media but specifically the community groups uh, twice it has happened people have tagged me that we need we need your response i was like uh, i am off social media into some uh, secluded place and i will be responding once i get back to my normal sort of routine and that makes sense all right with uh, personal experience the only thing as uh, pinner was saying that uh, the work life is the same the uh, social life is the same and it's like uh, you are really tempted to do it and trust me 12 to 18 hours in a day i have done that when i was setting up the co-working space uh, my first assignment as a community manager six years ago way back in 2015 all right it is not a very healthy habit all right and specifically when we talk about digital detox uh, and uh, uh, cutting it off you have to switch off your mobile data you have to not switch on your wi-fi all right and specifically the settings would work but but the fact is uh, yeah you need to be accessible to your family members and a few friends but specifically to the community members you need to be there and uh, spending alone time is a great way to recharge where people actually don't know you that what exactly do you do and you know you have to be in a very different uh, setting to recharge yourself that that's my two cents to it i concur <laughs> yeah thank you Vinny. Kit, Kit, do you wanna yeah sure can you hear me yes okay yes. Uh, so I worked a pretty non-traditional role. I was a Twitch streamer and influencer. And part of that is managing a lot of people. Um, and at one point, I think of the largest, you know, my community was 2000 or so members in a discord uh, server that I had to manage. And that was probably the hardest part of community management for me. It wasn't necessarily the social media aspect, but the, moderation of all the different channels and venues of contact um, and being accessible um, to the community at large. And that's what burned me out was just like never being able to really like take a break, even when I would go on vacations or go home to see my family. You know, I was always on. There was no off switch. Um, and so I did that for like five and a half years. And then at the end of it, I was just like, I need a break. So I took about a year off of doing that just to study and kind of hone my skills and social media and things like that and take vacations. Um, but yeah, it's just the over accessibility that got to me. Like, I think there's a fine line between being accessible to your community and you know, being empathetic and a good listener and obviously things like that. And then being almost like too entrenched within it. I think it's also our, our culture that we have to go, go, go. There's no yeah. one teaching us. We should. The fact yeah. is we are so much invested in it. And since we are not responding and we are not engaging and specifically also socializing, we feel that, you know, we are not doing our job what takes us down and it it compounds over a period of time and and frankly speaking after my uh, first role as community manager which which was there for uh, two years when i moved to a new role that there was a three month transition time and that transition time actually helped me uh, recover from the burnout which uh, went on in my first job as a community manager so, so now when I am into my independent consulting, it's like I know that two to three hours in a day I'm productive. So I will uh, schedule my work during that time and the rest of the time it is following up with clients and figuring out and the other things which uh, keeps into place. But having a specific uh, work schedule which works for you and also incorporate like for example, uh, 
I really wanted to attend this session, and that's why I'm out here. I had a choice of not attending it, but I know that uh, there is, there would be some uh, information which will be very interesting out here to uh, come in. So so that that's how you have to start prioritizing it. There's no way about it, and uh, it 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 has to be a very uh, what do you call mindful practice to start with. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You have to you have to be conscious about setting those boundaries, whatever they are, and and conscious about sticking to them for sure. Um, so one other thing that that I will say, and I know that this isn't always possible. I know, Kit, to your like in the influencer space in particular, I think it gets really difficult because you didn't necessarily set out to be a community manager. Um, but you are fully dependent on your community. I mean, if it's, if it's, if, if, if influencing is what you do full time, um, and, and they, they are so demanding, right. They expect, they, they feel like they own you. Um, exactly. So it's, it's hard to set boundaries when you feel like you owe everything to them. Right. Yeah. So, so I, I get that my, my advice is definitely not applicable to all situations. I understand how like that's kind of tricky, but um, what I would say is whenever it is possible is, is get other people involved. And so you might be the only community manager on your team, but there's probably somebody else. Maybe it's a customer support agent or your manager or like somebody else who you can train i mean obviously that you don't you don't need to train them up as like an actual community manager they don't need to know how to engage the community but they just need to know how to like do basic moderation reply to anything that's urgent make sure that there aren't any um inappropriate posts in there right and then as long as they've got this basic training of like moderation so the the way i we do it at coursera we, we're obviously a, a well i wouldn't say large company but definitely not a small company so we actually have like a, a huge team of of customer support agents um, and so we've trained up a couple of those to be community moderators. And actually they are in our community full time. They just do basic moderation. Um, but it's such a huge sort of weight off of our shoulders, knowing that we're not the only ones responsible for making sure that the community um, is remains like a safe space and that anything super urgent that comes in is, is going to get handled. And then there's also, um, you know, they can still flag stuff to us if necessary, but we know that the notifications we're getting are, are only like super urgent stuff rather than kind of anything that might be happening in the community. Um, I think for influencers, um, you know, the some of the more successful influencers do hire people. I think that's also... I don't know how much influencers sort of talk amongst each other, but it feels to me like a lot of the mid-tier influencers actually have no idea that um, the really successful influencers are not a team of one anymore, right? They hire right. someone to edit their videos and they hire someone to like manage their comment section and stuff like that. So that's that's also, I think, a possibility. Yeah. Um definitely taught me a lot about how to do a lot of different aspects of community management and social media management. So um, I'm not looking to go back into that, but I am looking in the gaming industry for community management positions in a more structured environment. So that's where I'm at currently after the burnout. Thanks for letting me share. We have something similar in our community, just like you mentioned, Claire, uh, like community moderators. Um, they are not actually part of the team, like they are not uh, paid members of the team, let's say, but in the community without actually uh, paying the membership uh, fee. And we actually call them, you know, this is like a very friendly community and we um it's only for women so we um call them and i was actually one of them before working here we call them big sisters and uh, they are uh, supporting uh, 
members and also just like you mentioned they are actually the eye of the community and you know if there is anything people come to them as well like asking for advice and you know for help so uh, they are kind of in that position in our community yeah that's a great point you can also lean on your members to kind of help out with some of this stuff yeah yeah, that's that's very critical in the early stage that you identify your super fans and kind of develop them as your internal advisor kind of confidant you know group of people that you could work with brainstorm ideas with they are part of the community so as a way also to identify which one of those members will level up and can help you in a more formal manner in the future so remember, you are a part of a community, you deserve support also, right? And so the support you give to them, make yourself be available to receive their support too. And you might have to ask individual people for help. And the beautiful thing about community managers too is we have an opportunity to influence the culture so we can start reiterating, establishing the culture, collaborating, co-creating it with the community to say, hey, I think, you know, working this hour, this hour might be good for me. What do you think? Right. That's usually my style. You have to figure out your style. So communication is key and establishing boundaries and guidelines in the beginning will help because you can always change in the future. And the key to success to become a thriving community manager, you need to talk to other community managers. Because we're the only ones that can understand how crazy or fun our job is as well. And it really works. It really works because the fact is once you are uh, new in the industry, the older guys help out. And now since I have been in the community space since last six years, a lot of the young folks who are getting into this role, they are reaching out. How did you do that? What was the story going on and how exactly is this thing uh, working out and and frankly speaking you know some or the other aspect generally it works both ways it's mutual yeah when when you feel like you're mentoring someone actually it's the mentor that's more that gets more uh, in my opinion because you see a different perspective yeah, that's true. So uh, one of the young community managers joined in an independent role at a different startup. And we have this community folks, which is a platform for community builders in India. Uh, uh, so she reached out that what should I do? And frankly speaking, every once in a month, I get onto a call with her for, for an hour or so to figure out how exactly is she, you know, figuring things out along the way. And that's her first job. Yeah. I do that too. A bunch of us on Twitter do that. We will just tweet to say, hey, we're open to chatting about anything related to community. Rosie, Sherry, I got that from Rosie, Sherry. So I'm available if you guys want to chat. <laughs> anything else? We might end early today. It looks like we're not yeah. as stressed as we were. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious if anybody else has any what has any strategies that they they can share like how they avoid burnout or strategies that they've heard other people use strategies that you wish you could use but for whatever reason you actually kind of can't right now uh so claire uh frankly speaking just because i have been through at least three burnout cycles in my professional career now early on i am able to identify that the burnout is about to set in. So frankly speaking, uh, we want to give in more. But since it is also that our mind uh, can work creatively only for particular number of hours in a day. Right. And, and the other piece is the operations and the other, you know, monotonous task, which we say, which uh, takes care of. Make sure that your creative streak is there and you're giving it enough rest so that uh, rest, recovery, and rejuvenation is very important. So, frankly speaking, there is uh, no uh, what do you call uh, plan which you say that it can save you from burnout. But exact, I mean, how do you test your boundaries? So, you take one baby step at a time, and then you figure out how to manage the entire uh, 
uh, things out. Uh, so just to give you my example, I mean, I'm, I'm just, uh, you know, putting it in. Uh, since last uh, 13 years, I have been running marathon. I started with half and then I graduated to full and I run one marathon a year. So just because of that one routine, it keeps my sanity intact so that I'm able to, uh, you know, do my job the way I'm doing and then figure it uh, out story. So also have a, a very different hobby, which fuels your um, both uh, mind and body to keep you going. I don't have that. <laughs> Build one. <laughs> it can be anything. I mean, look, I, I can. That's why I said that I'm giving you an example as a marathon runner, but it can be anything, any damn thing. Don't don't even think about it. Or yeah. have a small community of your friends who are which are not work related with whom you can always uh, bank upon, latch upon to share what's going on and they will share their things. And, and it's it's a very uh, close knit network. Hey, Vineet, I have finished a marathon. Yeah. Back when I was a baby. Ask how long <laughs> it took me. Ask how long it took me. How long? Within the day. That's great. <laughs> that, that's great start. I, I walked and jogged and it took me seven and a half hours. <laughs> I mean, either way. You, you, you completed it and that's commendable. Yeah. Yeah, I did it with a group too, so hmm. it's fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, getting a hobby or, or, or like a, a group of friends that you meet with regularly, like that's 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 a, that's a great piece of advice. Um, one thing I wanted to, I guess, discuss, but there's a there's a different. I, I read something and I wish I could remember exactly what it was or where I found it, but I'm gonna give you the paraphrase it as best I can. Um, but there's a difference between like burnout and like working hard or working long hours. And it's it's the ratio of kind of how much time and energy you put into your work and how much your work gives back to you. So actually, uh, I mean, not to disagree with, with Vineet when you said you, you actually, you can't concentrate for more than like so many hours in a day. Like I totally agree with that too, but you you can if you're doing something that really really fulfills you you can put in hours and hours and weeks and weeks without necessarily needing breaks or as many breaks without getting burnt out it's when you're working on something that doesn't give back and doesn't fulfill you in that way that's when you end up getting burnt out and so i think another way to address the burnout as well as what we've already discussed about, you know, setting like time boundaries and stuff, but is actually to look at the actual day-to-day -day work that you're doing and see if there are ways to kind of remove the tedious and boring bits. Like, are you spending like hours just doing like basic moderation, like organizing posts, removing swear words, like whatever it is that's actually just really boring and unfulfilling. And is there a way to remove that part of your job or to spend less time on that part of your job? Um, or are you, maybe you're, you're uh, I'm going to say just, I don't want to offend anyone, but are you like just a community moderator? And actually, if you could take on some higher level like community strategy kind of work, maybe then you would feel more fulfilled. And even if you're putting in the same number of hours or more hours even, you might actually feel better about it because it might just be that more stimulating work that you're doing. So I don't know that there's like a specific piece of advice here, but I would say like that's definitely something to think about if, if you're feeling the burnout set in. But Claire, so why wait till I feel burned out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, definitely. I officially yeah. up every three months to say, am I burned out? Do I need to talk to someone? It's kind of like going to the dentist or going to the doctor, like a regular thing. Because our society will allow us to work until we die. <laughs> so Claire, just to, you know, put my perspective in place, uh, 
I'm a physics graduate. I studied physics in college. And during that time, I have been to uh, sort of uh, initial research level stuff, which the scientists do. All right. Uh, so there used to be a time when, you know, you feel that you are saturated and you can take a break. And, and frankly speaking, there have been times when I have like stretched for like seven, eight, nine, ten 10 hours in a day uh, because I was working on a certain problem and I was looking at the research and everything. And that is what is helping me right now, you know, uh, skim through the forums and figure out what, what is going on and pick up those words and then uh, see that how community is behaving. So that is a skill which I picked up during college. And uh, uh, yeah, you can do it for a long time. Now, I, I still remember it was November 2015, sixth month into my first community manager experience. Uh, I had conducted 39 events in 29 days at, at my co-working space. I used to go to office daily. There was no Saturday, Sunday. And frankly speaking, when I told my boss, who was the operations manager, that on 30th of November, I am taking a break, it was like, you know, hell broke loose. But I still took the break. And that day, despite being on break, for two hours, I was on call actually mending issues which was going on at the hub. Because 30th of November, I think, was a Monday or something. And, you know, Mondays are always crazy. Uh, when uh, the week is done and the week starts and, and that's the thing so so why, why did it happen because I had less help I was the only one community manager out there the other one was not very sincere enough to uh, be delegated responsibility and they it was their first job right so 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 that is something where the expectations are set set in and uh, as the organization grew and then we figured out that this is how things are happening that's when you realize that for every 100 member at a co-working space you need one community manager and then you have three community managers so that the next one is like a senior community manager who can take up both the uh, tactical role as well as a little strategy role reporting to the uh, operations manager to make sure that the uh, things are being run pretty smooth so essentially it was a combination of both operations as well as the community role and and that that's how things started piling up so so that that's my uh, experience which I'm sharing it out loud. Mm, yeah, and you've actually reminded me uh, of some advice that that my husband once gave me that I think is super relevant to community managers. Like you have to, well, you have to like take those breaks. You have to be um, strict about like I'm going on vacation. I am going on vacation, whether you like it or not. Um, and also, sort of related to that you have to like let things drop, right? If you have too much on your plate, you actually have to not do things. You have to be okay with like, I'm going to fail at this. I'm going to not meet that deadline, right? Because I have too much stuff on my plate. And and obviously it depends kind of the company that you work for. But assuming that you you actually work for a, for a good company that that cares about its employees and, and, and providing a quality experience and all the rest of it, it's that that will get people to realize they need to hire another community manager, right? Because if you just keep doing everything and and working late into the night to get everything done, there's the, your senior leadership or whatever will not realize that they need another person to help you out because the work's getting done. So they don't need another person to help you out, right? Exactly. Um, like, and that and i'll tell you what happened with me so uh, since you mentioned coursera i have done about good uh, 20 certifications from coursera all right so so it used so my my day also you so there is like weekly deadline which is there i mean right now it is uh, as you go you can complete the courses but I, i'm talking about good eight years ago seven years ago when there was a weekly deadline that you have to finish off the chapters and give in the quiz and submit in the assignments it was crazy trust me it was crazy because you have weeks of work and, and frankly speaking there uh, the content which is there on the platform is pretty intense you need time to process it and i was like i have to get this uh, course completed because it is very interesting but also i have to focus on job and 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 my focus was split so i still remember dan arialis uh, in introduction to irrational behavior the passing uh,
idea for every week's lecture was more than 90 percent nine on ten all right i used to get a seven seven and half i did the entire course but i do not have the certificate and that was the one of the best course which i have done on course era <laughs> so that, that that was the situation i mean i just wanted to share yeah, no, that's a great story. I know the, the Coursera experience has, has changed a lot. I joined Coursera about six years ago. So it was just after we transitioned to to our, well, the current system. It's evolved since then too. But mm. um, yeah, I understand that those early days were really intense. Um, mm. But it made for a very powerful community experience as I hear it. And I'm kind of sad we've lost that to an extent. Uh, that's true. Uh, I mean, I used to skim through the forums during the course material and I'm still part of two, three Facebook groups, which were part of the uh, course curriculum and the professors also used to interact on it. And that, that's how things were. And, and it's a pretty interesting experience. Um, may I take a photo? <laughs> Is it OK? So if you guys can get on video, fine. If not, I will take a photo in about a minute. Uh, I'm doing a time check, Claire. We have about 12, 13 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. A question. Of course. Um, so is there any uh, red to burn out? Like, uh, you know, just before you get there, like you realize so that you avoid uh, getting there. <laughs> Wait, I have to take a video right now, Ready? Right? Uh, a photo, ready? One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you. Answer that question, Claire. <laughs> is there, is there... No. Sorry, my, my laptop just oh. flashed up with some error. We'll take oh, another yeah. photo. I would love to. Hey, Benit, get back on camera. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You have to Photoshop the two together. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I'll get three minutes to answer. Ready? One, two, three. Thank you. Awesome. Ahead, um, yeah, that is a great question. Um, I, I can obviously give my input, but I'm sure other people have, have thoughts too. But I would say when, when you can't be bothered anymore, especially when you used to find it interesting, right? When you're suddenly like, I don't want to go to work today. I don't want to look in this community right now. Or or something that you know you I like chatting with these people and you're like oh no no not again no um i that's kind of the obvious thing that that comes to mind um and i think when you're when you're like away from work too like how much is it is it dwelling on your mind do you find yourself complaining to your friends and family all the time like oh and they did this and that. and I think there's a difference too because there's two different types of complaining because there's a lot of things to complain about where communities are concerned you know there's people do annoying and bad stuff all the time you're like oh and this person said that and I can't believe they had this fight um but I think you can notice a difference in the way you talk about it like the one kind of complaining is sort of like I'm funny stories and I'm annoyed yes but I'm also like find it entertaining versus like I've actually like I've had enough these people are driving me insane um I, I think you can kind of tell the difference anyone else yeah I think one of the tells can be where how much you're posting so either it will just plummet because you just the creativity is completely sapped. You can't really think of anything. Or all of a sudden you're going to hyper posting. So you'll hyper post really low quality stuff. But it just, it's those memes and things like that. And there's little engagement posts, but they just really ramp up. So there's no quality, no depth, no passion. But it's either hyper or it falls into a pit. Usually it goes up and then drops down for quite a few people. Yeah, for me, it was Sunday night. I would like dread going to work on Monday. And I got sick of it. And please don't be that way. <laughs> it's not good, right, Leanne? Whatever you yeah. feel. I think we should all commit to planning our, our lives, our work, so that we have like artificial stop 
point so we can stop and think, where am I? What's making me unhappy? If you talk to friends or talk to another community manager, I, I, I'm just talking it right now to myself. Every three months, I need to talk to someone to say, how are things going? I'm happy because we're very high functioning, super accomplished people. We want to do everything until we which is not the right thing. So I am telling myself, this is my commitment, that every three months I would talk to somebody or like write my goals and say, what am I unhappy about? And hopefully you have a management team or a team around you that you can be honest about to say, I really love this work, but this one is not particularly working out. I need to take a vacation or somebody I need a break. I need help in this area. Uh, I wish to you that you have a boss that understands because when I said that to my boss the first time, they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> just go, just take one day off and come back the next day. <laughs> like, no, you don't understand. But anyway, that's my point. Don't wait till you're there. Have regular checks. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Any more questions or any stories anybody wants to share? Um, no, it's like a, a tip that helped me. Um, if you can afford it or it's available in your country, therapy is great. Um, just seeing a therapist, even if it's once a month to just get stuff off your chest, whether it's like personal life related or work related, it helps to kind of ease the uh, burden of things. And that's definitely been a big help for me managing my stress levels and burnout. I need help with telling men to get therapy kit. Sorry, I'm being <laughs> under issues. I do that all the time on social media. So I'm a big proponent of everyone should go to therapy if they can. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I think, you know, therapy can be super helpful. But if you need therapy because of your job, continuously all the time get a different job that's that's 100 percent true that's 100 percent true i went to my doctor and he gave me medication and i said what if i just quit the stress instead of fixing my stress what why am i working so hard i only there's only seven days a week i can't wear my 200 shoes I'm exaggerating. <laughs> okay. I did it, actually. I, uh, I studied midwifery at university, and I was working as a, a midwife nurse just a month ago, along with this uh, community management job. And when I uh, was offered to work, well, it was my goal since the beginning when I started to work in the health center, um, but when I was offered to work more hours in this community, um, I was over the moon and then I just quit that job. And I know exactly what you mean uh, when you say like, just quit the stress because it's, I don't know if it's the same in your countries, but here, like uh, in the health professions, it's very, very heavy and difficult. And like when I quit my job, uh, my colleagues actually were looking at me with, you know, I, I don't know how to say this in English, but they um, wanted to say to quit. They just wanted something uh, that could get them out of there. Um, so I know exactly what it means not liking what you do and Congrats to us. <laughs> okay, shall we close out if there's no other comments? This is great, I love it. Um, continue to stay in touch, we're on social media. Um, our next uh, month's topic, for the first time I schedule it in advance, it's uh, time-saving tips for community managers. Is that a dog? Oh, yeah. And the staffy. Oh, hi, baby. Yeah, it likes so, to say hello a little too often. Hello, baby. <laughs> we love dogs. Very welcome. 
very much, Claire, Pnar, Vinny, Kit, and Leanne. So great to meet you. Stay in touch with community managers. Better together is my hashtag. If you have any comments, opinions, reach out. Otherwise, see you next month. No yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, you, Thank you so much. much. Tina, for organizing. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.